Hi uh, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. If you guys watch this show, you know I will probably never join the Empire or the Rebellion, Old Republic, New Republic, First Order, Confederacy, Jedi, or the Sith. And that's because I like being neutral, and I like only risking my ass for myself. And so the life of an independent merchant captain is the life I would choose. Of course, it's not a life for everyone. For instance, there's really no support network, no help or backup when things go sideways. And trust me, things always go sideways in this line of work. The only thing you can really depend on is yourself and whatever equipment you happen to be packing at the time. And the most important piece of equipment of all is the ship you're gonna be using for work and also call home for the majority of the year. Now, unless you're coming from royalty or some really old money, you're most likely not gonna be looking for a state-of-the-art military Corvette. Not only will this type of ship encourage the wrong type of attention, it's also hilariously overpriced and probably overkill for the job. You see, the number one rule for being a private contractor plying the space lanes for credits is blending in and being invincible. And there's nothing more invincible than a beat up secondhand Karelian freighter, which you could probably get for a pretty cheap price. But browsing used ships, especially in a junkyard full of used ships, can be an art of its own. So today I thought it'd be very helpful to come up with a list of 10 features you're really going to want to look for when you're searching for your first used freighter. Now before we begin, a special word from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, the premier mobile turn-based RPG. The goal here is to collect champions from several different factions and classes and combine them into the ultimate team for campaigning, raiding, and of course, PvP arena battles. And there are a lot of combinations to choose from with over 500 champions and millions of artifacts and gear and equipment. Raid Shadow Legends is an easy game to get into, but it takes quite a long time to really master and dominate. And just newly added this month are Champion Fragments. Collect an entire set of them and you can summon some extremely powerful special champions. You can also now collect daily login rewards for up to 270 days of consecutive play. There's also a new bazaar where you can get all sorts of rare and high value items by spending gold bars that you can win in the tag arena. This game is free to play, and we have a special link below for new generation tech players. If you sign up through the link, you'll get 100,000 silver, two clan boss keys, three ancient shards, and one free champion, the Executioner. This offer will be available for the next 30 days. All of this will be waiting for you here. Thank you for your patience, ladies and gents. On to the video. Most civilian freighters come with two hyperdrives. You have your primary drive, usually in the class five range and up, and then a smaller backup drive for when that main drive fails. Usually the backup drive is useless in like a class 12. In our line of work, getting from system to system in a timely fashion not only will help you win jobs, it will greatly increase the number of jobs that you can do in a given time and also increase the amount of money you'll make. As a smuggler, the bare minimum of what you want in a ship is a class 2.0 hyperdrive, which is what is commonly found on most larger capital ships in federal navies and corporate security forces. This will allow you to journey across the entire galaxy in just a week or two. So freighters like the YT-1300 come stock with a class 2.0 hyperdrive, which is ideal. Stock hyperdrives are always more reliable than any aftermarket drive you can find. Now, seeing that hyperdrives are going to be one of the most important and also expensive components on your ship, it's a good idea to make sure what kind of hyperdrive that used freighter is packing, and it's also probably helpful to determine how much money you're probably going to need to spend to upgrade it or maintain it. Also, be aware of more finicky aftermarket drives. The Millennium Falcon might have a class 0.5 hyperdrive, making it one of the fastest ships in the galaxy, but half the time only the class 10 backup is working. Make sure you got a good mechanic on board, especially when you're dealing with a very souped up ship with a lot of aftermarket parts. In a galaxy full of millions of different factions, regulations, and trade codes, it's probably a good idea to hide your most valuable cargo in a place where customs officials can't find them. The reality is you'll never have all of the documents, tariffs, or inspections required for an easy journey to every port. You can blame that on the bureaucratic mess the galaxy has become and the lack of consistency and rule of law in most systems. 
What you almost certainly will find in every system is a corrupt customs official looking to seize your ship and pick out some items from your inventory. So make sure whatever you are hauling, like on the outside, it's unappealing and doesn't attract much attention. And what you really are hauling is safely hidden in places your average custom official will never look. So a freighter with a custom built hidden cargo space is a big plus when it comes to choosing your new ship. There's some things on a ship that you just can't modify. Ultimately, some freighters are gonna be clunky, oversized, and extremely hard to get going. Finding the perfect freighter usually involves finding a good balance between cargo space and the size and maneuverability of that ship. Generally, the smaller it is, the more powerful the thrusters are, the more maneuverable the ship's gonna be. On one end of the extreme, you have ships like the Ghost, which can easily be classified as a light gunship and can easily fly circles around snub fighters in the right hands. Something like the Millennium Falcon or Ebon Hawk is going to be a bit larger, but still retain mobility while keeping the cargo space large enough to make your trips profitable. Even the smallest freighter is going to present a pretty big target for your enemy, especially if you're getting chased by a bunch of fast starfighters. There naturally will be more surface space for your shields and armor to cover, so a very common and helpful upgrade on most freighters is defensive blaster turrets. Ideally, you want these turrets to cover the most vulnerable parts of your ship, the bottom, the top, and the aft. Most professional fighter pilots are trained to approach freighters from these vectors, so having a defensive turret in that position will greatly decrease their ability to hit you. If you are expecting trouble or just trying to deter trouble, having those additional turrets is a must. Typically, when it comes to any freelance work, violence and conflict will only cut into your profits. And although being a pirate is considered an independent captain profession, when you spend your days raiding and attacking other ships, you will eventually reap what you sow. The biggest factor that determines whether you'll survive a profession like this is not just based on luck or how well prepared you are. It's about the quantity of violent engagements you get involved in. So the less, the better. Which is why I recommend mainly focusing on mobility, speed, and defense when you're looking for that first ship. But sometimes offensive firepower is also necessary. And while blasters will help with enemy patrol ships, what you really need is a few torpedo tubes. Not only are these really easy to conceal, it also opens up your arsenal to a variety of different toys that can be really helpful. Starting off with your more basic concussion missile, which can take out enemy corvettes and help bust a hole in a blockade. Then you have something a bit more tactical, like an ion torpedo, which can disable even the larger ships and buy you some time for escape. But if you really want to go all out, then look no further than a proton torpedo. These projectiles are designed to bring down even the largest capital ships, which is also why these projectiles are not only very expensive, but also extremely illegal and difficult to find without a military purchase ID. It's just another illicit weapon on your ship that will drive customs officials crazy. And it was also very highly illegal to have on your ship during the Galactic Empire time. So if you do have some proton torpedoes on your ship, make sure you have a really good excuse for having them. Now, the quickest and cheapest way to increase your survivability on a ship is just by taking some plates of Durasteel and bolting them onto sensitive areas that need to be protected. Thanks to advances in anti-gravity tech like repulsor lifts, it's no longer that dangerous to add a couple of tons of metal to your ship when flying in atmosphere. So go crazy. The more post-apocalyptic your ship looks, the less likely people are going to be bothering you. While those Durasteel plates are going to do a great job at absorbing all the incoming fire, what you really need is a decent shield generator so that none of that fire reaches your ship in the first place. Ideally, you're not going to want to skimp here. You want military-grade shields, like the ones found on Dynamic Class Freighters. This class of ship was used by the famous Jedi Sith Revan. Now, generally, you're going to have two types of shields. You're going to have shields that have a very quick recharge time, but a smaller charge, or you're going to have a shield with a very long recharge time that has a much longer charge. The Mon Cala were famous for placing multiple smaller, quicker recharging shield generators on board that created a redundant shield system in case any of them failed. I recommend you actually aim for that type of system instead of having just one large shield generator, have multiple smaller ones all around your ship in case there is failure. This is usually the better design. For an independent captain, there's nothing more deadly in the hyperspace lines than an interdictor. 
An interdictor is the type of ship that is able to project artificial gravity wells and place them on strategic hyperspace lanes or around planets. All ships have hyperdrives with governors or safeties on them that will deactivate the hyperdrive when they encounter a gravity well. This is a safety measure that prevents ships from crashing into black hole stars and planets. But it can also be used by enforcement agency interdictors to pull independent captains out of hyperspace and keep them there. Now, usually the governors on these hyperdrives are in very hard to reach places and you can't just like remove them immediately. You really need a good mechanic and slicer to kind of modify the system so you can manually switch it on and off. It's an expensive procedure, but it's worth it. Sometimes your life and cargo will depend on your ability to trick an interdictor. While some captains are content with just having a few skate pods for those emergency moments, I argue that having a fully functional shuttle is a much better alternative. Not only will they actually provide you an actual chance of surviving an emergency situation, some of the more complicated shuttles, like the ones found on the Ghost, has offensive options as well. As a matter of fact, this Phantom shuttle was considered an auxiliary starfighter, which also means it had hyperdrive. It proved to be very useful for the Spectres. So whether you need a little extra firepower or you just want to enter a planet incognito because your main ship is way too famous, a really well-built shuttle is a great investment. While some captains like bragging about their hyperdrives and how many parsecs they made the Kessel run in, at the end of the day, most pilots are going to be making their money at sublight speeds. So it's only in real space when combat maneuvers really start. That's when you're pushing your ship to the max and you got your inertial compensator set at 98%. So when checking that first ship, make sure you got a good pair of sublight engines on the ship that are very reliable. So there you have it guys, those are 10 features that I highly recommend you have on that first ship. I know it's a lot to ask for, but there are a lot of used ships out there circulating in the market and you really shouldn't settle for the first one just because it looks cool or has a good paint job. Well guys, let me know in the comment section below if you have any tips that I've missed about purchasing your first freighter. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.